The ship breaks the ice for hundreds of kilometers, and to do so, it utilizes small nuclear reactors inside it. Today we're going to talk about nuclear-powered icebreakers, which are incredible ships because they can navigate in truly hostile places like the Arctic. But what are these snowplows of the sea like, and how exactly do they work? To understand the difference between a normal ship and an icebreaker, the first thing we need to look at is the hull. In fact, the bow of an icebreaker is shaped a little differently from that of a normal ship. It is much more elongated. This essentially allows it to do two things. One, to break the thinner ice while it's navigating, and two, to move it laterally to stop it from accumulating in front of it. But that's not all. In fact, sometimes the ice can reach a considerable thickness. We're talking about one or two meters, or it can even be up to six meters thick. And obviously, it won't just break when you run into it. Well, this hull allows the ship to slide up onto the ice, and then, once it's on top with its own weight, bam, it breaks the ice. Then it reverses back before advancing again, sliding back up onto the ice and repeating the process again and again and again. Obviously, to withstand all this, the hull must also be made in a certain way. In fact, it's usually made out of high-strength steel alloys. This is particularly important because the temperatures are extremely low there, and at those kinds of temperatures, normal steel tends to become brittle and break, and this obviously is not good at all. The steel hull typically also has a polymer coating, both to minimize friction with the ice and to limit corrosion. Then, to move with agility through the ice, these ships have propellers and rudders in protected positions, and they also have thrusters at both the stern and the bow, which obviously provide the thrust needed to climb onto the ice and break it. Obviously, to accomplish all this, the first thing you need are very powerful engines, and that's why some of these ships are nuclear-powered, meaning they have many nuclear reactors on board, but we'll talk about that in more detail later. Anyway, okay, that's all well and good, but what do we need icebreakers for? The main purpose of icebreakers is to clear a path for other vessels, such as cargo ships or perhaps fuel-carrying tanker ships. So the icebreakers lead the way and create an ice-free corridor, something that, as I'm sure you understand, is extremely important, particularly for all the countries bordering on the Arctic. In fact, it should come as no surprise that Russia leads the field in this regard, also because we need to keep in mind that for goods traveling from Europe to Asia, there are two choices. Now, let's go to the digital whiteboard and I'll show you briefly. If goods need to go, for example, from Europe to Asia, there are two options. They can either go this way, Right now, I'm plotting a very rough course, obviously, but it's just to give you an idea. Or the alternative is to take the long way around, go through the Suez Canal, go through the Indian Ocean, and finally reach Asia. So, as you can see, one route is significantly longer than the other, but that's not all. Icebreakers actually serve other purposes as well. For example, they can act as tow trucks, for lack of a better word, to retrieve vessels that have perhaps become trapped in the ice. They can also conduct expeditions for scientific research purposes, given that in these inhospitable environments, there aren't many vessels that can navigate with ease. And then, speaking of navigation, it's time to talk about nuclear-powered engines. Currently, the only country that possesses nuclear-powered icebreakers is Russia. According to the most recent 2022 data from Rosatom, the fleet currently includes two dual reactor icebreakers with capacities of 81,500 horsepower called the Arctica and the Sibir. I hope my pronunciation is correct. Two 75,000 horsepower dual reactor icebreakers, the Yamal and the 50 Let Perbedi, two single reactor icebreakers with capacities of about 50,000 horsepower, the Taimir and the Vegach, and then there's also a barge carrier and five service ships, all nuclear powered. All these ships are powered by at least one nuclear reactor, an SMR to be specific, meaning small modular reactor. As it's a modular reactor, it means that one reactor module can be combined with other modules to achieve more power. Without going into too much technical detail, we can say that these reactors operate through the process of nuclear fission, exploiting the splitting of heavy atoms, such as uranium-238, to produce electrical energy. To conclude, I would like to answer a question that surely some of you have asked yourselves, namely, since icebreakers break the ice in the Arctic Sea, can they create environmental problems? 
To answer, I'll refer to what is said by the National Snow and Ice Data Center at the University of Colorado. They made what I think is a really interesting calculation. On average, in the Arctic Ocean in the month of June, the ice covers an area of about 10 million square kilometers. An icebreaker clears an area of about 10 square kilometers during its journey from Europe to Asia. So that's 10 square kilometers compared to 10 million square kilometers. So yes, it's possible that the passage of a ship might cause some minor environmental imbalances in a limited area. But overall, it's literally a drop in the ocean. For now, these ships don't cause damage as they pass, and even assuming a slight increase in traffic in the coming years, the situation will generally remain the same. I hope you liked the video. See you soon for the next video, right here on Geopop Everyday Science.